Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another 3D printing thing. Since it looks like this is going to become a thing, I may as well start a playlist for 3D printing stuff, which I will throw up there and down in the description for you if you want to go watch everything I do with 3D printing, I guess. In the last video on this thing, which was the unboxing video, I mentioned that I cannot get this thing to print two dimension, uh, meaning the parts don't come off the size they're supposed to be. And I think what I've got going on is a problem with my Z rods. Which are these things? There are stepper motors on each side of the printer that turn these up and down. And when they do, the bar that carries the x-axis goes up and down. So what I think is going on is that these two things are not responding the same way from side to side. It could be that they're set wrong to begin with or whatever, or something's too tight or too loose. And it's doing something like this as it's trying to print. And ultimately it's crushing parts as it's printing them instead of doing what it's supposed to do. So what I'm going to do is tear this entire Z rod setup and the X axis off of the whole thing and just go over it and nut and bolt it and see if I see anything that's out of place or maybe one of these wheels has a bad bearing in it or something and see if I can find anything that's just obviously wrong with it because I didn't put this together. This came this way out of the box from Creality and, you know, Chinese 3D printer company, you just kind of get what you get. And while I'm at it, since I'm going to have all this stuff apart anyway, I'm going to replace this guy with this guy, which is actually a manual tensioner for this x-axis belt right here. And this, this guy comes unassembled as a kit from Amazon. I'll throw a link to it down in the description. I think it was like 15 bucks. Since we're going to have this all taken apart anyway, I'm going to swap that guy out. All of this is pretty obvious for the most part, but I think the first thing I'm going to do is on both sides, I'm going to release these z-axis couplers that couple these rods to the stepper motors. And I'm just going to do each side independently and then manually run it up and down with the opposite side and see if I can tell if anything weird is going on. Like you can see the adjacent side one chilling back there. I'm just going to unbolt this one and then run that one by hand and see if something binds or anything like that. And then I'll just go side to side, see if anything becomes obvious. I changed my mind. What I actually ended up doing was removing both Z-rods from it entirely so that this whole X gantry can just go up and down on its own. And I immediately spotted a problem. Um, see if you guys can even hear it. It's significant enough. Can you hear it doing that thump, 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 thump? Whether or not you can, it is. And I've seen this happen on the bed before, is that these rollers have got flat spots in them probably from, from shipping. So I'm probably gonna end up replacing those. And if I really wanted to push it, I could probably get Creality to send me some, but new ones like this 10 pack here, I think they're like 50 cents or a dollar a piece or something. It's not even worth messing with. And I'll throw a link to those in the description. So with these, there's not a whole lot more going on than what is obvious. You have to just take the nuts and bolts out. There are spacers in here on each one. In some locations, there'll be cam nuts that we have to keep track of, but no real big deal. I kind of think it's hard to screw this up, but if there's a way, I'm sure I'll find it. So that is what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull all these rollers off and probably just replace them all because it's not very expensive and it's not very hard. And while I'm at it, we'll get this guy swapped out for our new guy. After looking at this thing for a few minutes, there appears to be an absolutely right and wrong way to go about that. I've already got these two wheels off. I just put them back in with their stuff just to keep them safe. That wheel shouldn't be hard to get out. But our wheels over here on the other side, all the hardware is almost entirely obstructed by the stepper motor bracket for the x-axis, all the connectors and all that stuff. So I'm thinking the move here on this side is going to be just to remove this one. And there's a hole in the extrusion here to get in the bolt for it. And then we can just get on the nut on the back side of it here. And I can finish taking this side apart. And then this whole gantry should just slide off of it that way. And then I can work on these wheels without it being on the printer. And should make my life a whole lot easier. Except that's not going to work because of this bolt. So this guy and his buddy over here are both held captive by the x-axis. You can't actually get the bolt through the hole in the extrusion. The hole's just big enough to put a wrench through, not to get the bolt out of. Why? I don't know. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna have to take this hole end apart the hard way, which I was trying to avoid, but it is what it is. So this is becoming frustrating. When this was all assembled, this guy went like so. I could just barely get on the nut that was on that hole behind this connector, behind this connector. So to reassemble the thing, I'm going to have to take this board off. 
to get the x-axis off I had to disconnect these two wire harnesses which you wouldn't think would be a big problem they've just got the little spring lock guys except they have glued every single one of those spring lock connectors to this board you can see just like remnants of glue right there well that's kind of impossible to see when this is all up and upside down and everything else so I was just trying to work and pull the connector and everything that plug right there which is x negative it actually just pulled the plastic it actually just pulled this plastic connector straight off the board with the connector so after i get this board off i'm gonna have to like super glue that back down just to make sure everything's fine so fyi if you want to remove these harnesses make sure you go around and actually cut all the adhesive off that they've stuck them on with it strikes me as weird that they're gluing these on because these are locking connectors as they are but whatever <laughs> <laughs> is what it is and I've got all my wheels off and I was hoping it would be really obvious that we'd see them like kerchunk kerchunk but not really so I'm just going to put all new ones on and we'll see what happens but before we do that I am going to swap out this end for my belt tensioner assembly we just need a five millimeter allen and a 13 millimeter wrench and also of note this thing's put together with tons of nylock hardware like that's a nylock nut but none of the hardware is actually long enough to engage the nylock, so they're not actually locking. So we may have to go over this whole thing with some Loctite or something at some point. And it looks like there's another nut in there, just to make things a real pain. Okay, so now the belt is free. And I'm, while it's off, I'm going to play with the x-axis and see how it's rolling. I'm going to guess also like garbage. It's not the easiest thing in the world to demonstrate, but just feeding the bar through it, it actually feels really nice. So I think my x-axis wheels are okay. And of course, the x-axis wheels are some of the easiest to replace later on, so that's cool anyhow. And it may turn out that these wheels are okay because this thing shipped just ultra loose. I've already had to tighten those wheels up. So now the move is just to put our belt tensioner assembly on, which shouldn't be any big deal. Um, there's an exploded picture for this thing on its Amazon page that is actually quite good. So this thing comes as a bag of parts, but it shouldn't be any big deal to get it in there. Get our T-nuts started. I guess that is as far as it's going to go because it's hitting the frame. This did not actually say it fits a CR-10 Max. It just said CR series. Creality's naming for these is really stupid. It makes it impossible to get help for this actual printer. And it looks like it'll probably fit, but just barely. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these screws up, which are also Phillips, which are basically the only Phillips head screws on the whole printer now, which is also a little annoying. To expand on what I said a moment ago, it's annoying that they named this thing the way they did because the CR-10 doesn't have much in common with the rest of the CR series. The CR-10 Max doesn't have much in common with the rest of the series. It's got more in common with the CR-20. And I'm sure there's some brilliant way to deal with these T-nuts that I don't know of. They are just a hassle with my current knowledge base. So I just kind of get them started so they're the right way and snug them down and then try and jimmy the next guys in and do the same thing. So that's as far as it's gonna go in without modifying parts. It's hitting right down here. Just need to try and get our belt around the pulley. I think it'll make it. Oh, it's probably not going to be much fun. I almost wonder if I'd be better off to just slip the belt out. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. It's really easy to do that, too. So that's what we're going to do. Come on. There we go. So now we shouldn't have to wrestle with it as much. Now I feel dumb because I didn't have to take this thing apart at all. Could have and should have just left it together the way it was. So can confirm this kit does not fit a CR-10 Max very well. I need to go grind some of this off so it can recess in a little bit more. The belt just straight up isn't going to fit back on because there's just straight up not enough slack to get this guy to fit back on there. And you can see all the adjustment we still have in that screw. So we got plenty of space to tighten the belt. We're just way out of space to loosen to get things to cooperate. So I'm just going to go grind. Probably about a quarter inch off of that guy. So my limiting factor here is that distance. I don't need that. So I've got about a, about a quarter inch I can take off of it. This whole little limb right there. So maybe I'll take about half that amount off. Should come off pretty quick, it's just aluminum. 
I took as much off of this as I dare. A little easier to see now that it's got that raw aluminum edge. You can see I'm about an eighth inch shy of being flush between these two parts. It was more like a quarter before. Actually, I may still not be bottomed out. They're almost flush now. So that is mechanically as far as that can be moved. Hopefully it fits. Let's give it another shot. And that ended up being exactly what the doctor ordered. I don't have to fight or stretch to get that belt in at all now. There she goes. Right back at home. Of course, it's really loose. But that's the whole idea behind our tensioner. So right there, belt's super floppy. I'm going to start running the tensioner and you should see it pop right out. Get nice and tensioned. Yep. And then I can just run the wheel as I please to get more tension on it if I want. Not a perfect fit, but it didn't say it was supposed to be. Does fit though. Upgrade done. Let's get back to our rollers. So I've got all the new wheels put on and she's nice and buttery smooth now. But I thought I'd show you a little better view of what I was talking about with this connector and this nut. You have to pull this guy down out of your way because his home is right there or else you just cannot get on that nut to tighten it with the wrench or anything else. Also, there's one other issue I think I want to address. This is the Z-Rod guide, this brass guy over here. That's what those threaded rods go into. And they're intentionally loose to handle, you know, misalignment because the wheels are what actually keep it straight. But I don't think they need to be anywhere near as loose as they are. And the more precision I put in those, the better off the machine is going to be. So while I'm here and the rods are out and that connector's out and everything else, I'm going to tighten those up, I'll say considerably, but still not tight. I'm going to leave it plenty of room to dance just so those rods can be where they want to be. And to help me do that, I've just got the gantry propped up a little bit so I can get in here with a six millimeter socket on an extension. I think these bolts are actually getting tight in this brass thing. I don't know if it's actually threaded or if that's just what's happening. I'm just going to drop a bolt out of it and find out. So these things do work a little differently than I thought. And that block is threaded, which with those nylocks all the way down like they were, they weren't really locking it in place or anything either. So I really don't understand their design intent behind using those nylocks. But it looks like to adjust these, we do run the screws just in and out of this block. Also, this was kind of a nightmare to work on because this six millimeter socket doesn't exactly clear this boss on one of these holes. These holes aren't actually drilled perfectly straight. So I had to go get a nut driver to get in there because it's got a thinner wall. Anyway, fun stuff. Time to have a good time putting that guy back on and we'll try to adjust it again. Okay, first of all, the nuts that go on the back of that thing are actually five and a half millimeter. How I was able to take it apart with a six millimeter, who knows? Since I don't have a five and a half millimeter socket, and you probably don't either, that is 730 seconds in the US. Nut driver would be preferred because I ran into the same issue with this shoulder. So I have some more tools to buy. The other thing is, while I was messing with this, it occurred to me that these are probably fine Z height adjustments for left and right side but as they were set up from creality they weren't doing anything the nuts on the bottom are intended to be jam nuts to lock your adjustment down once you get it where you want it but they were just loose in space they weren't doing anything anyway so well, now we're gonna have to figure out how to adjust our z height which i'm just gonna probably do it with a ruler it shouldn't be that hard to get at least pretty close but with that all behind us That's how she's moving with brand new wheels everywhere. Really nice. No more bump, 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 bump. Feels really good. I don't know if that was our problem or not, but it's certainly not an issue anymore. Feels nice. Time to get our Z-Rods back in, one way or another. So I got my Z-Rod dropped down through the top. I've got the bottom of my collar tight on this stepper. I made sure to leave a gap in there so that this collar doesn't rub on the top or drag it. And how I did that is I just put the wrench in there while I was tightening that bottom guy with an Allen key. This guide rod doesn't really want to line up with this coupling. So I'm going to start futzing with my stepper motor position until it's looking a little better. What's disturbing is it looks like it actually needs to go inboard. And I'm not sure if there's a reasonable way to do that. Because if it's dead up against this already, you know, what am I supposed to do about it? And it does have some, some you know, plenty of slack in it, which is by design. But I'd still like it to be as close to concentric together as I can. You know, there's a little better view of the misalignment from the top. So I'm going to piddle around with that for a little bit and see if I can make it fit a little bit better. Then, of course, I'll end up doing the same thing on the other side, too. So interestingly, behind these screws, back in here, this is the extrusion of bolts, too, and this is the little bracket for the stepper motor. They had placed a washer 
between each of those that spaced it out uh, pretty much exactly by what it was off. I'm not sure why they would have wanted to do that. What I did is I loosened this bracket and made sure it was pushed over this way just so the stepper wouldn't be riding right on this aluminum frame because maybe that would be bad. It's also not riding on the bottom. There's an air gap there. Tighten those screws back down, put it all back together, and you can see this rod lines up like perfectly now. You know, like I'm, I'm not honestly sure I could get it much better than that if I tried. So I have no clue what those washers were doing in there, but they were screwing up this geometry, so I took them out. I need to put them back in later. I guess it's something I can do. The next thing to do is going to be to actually get the Z-Rod back in here. And I know we don't want it to be completely bottomed out. I may have to loosen this whole collar up a little bit. I just needed it to be at least a little bit tight so I could even know what was going on before. That's interesting. Is there a shelf in it? Yes. So there's a shelf in that collar so the rod won't drop down any further than it's supposed to, which is kind of cool. I did not expect that. I do want to make sure the rod is actually on though. So what I'm going to do here is that's the rod completely bottomed out in the coupler. I'm going to try and pull it out just a little. Put my wrench back under here. <laughs> Looks like that's not going to work. So I've got my rod bottomed out in the collar. Let's get my wrench shim back in here. Let's see if we can get this guy all lined up. It's interesting. It's binding, which I would not have expected, especially as bad as it was before. So when I do that, I'm actually picking the gantry up. It doesn't want to go down in the post. That's weird. The screw just way too tight. Well, poo. That is freaky. It was way more misaligned before. And this thing's got all the room in the world to move, so why doesn't it want to go together? I feel like everything I'm doing here, I'm just making things worse. Maybe I did screw up by taking those washers out. I'm just going to loosen this bracket and see if it wants to drop together then. Looks like yes. I mean, this has all the freedom it could ever want to actually go together. So I am a moron and have fought with this Z-Rod coupler and stepper motor situation for like hours and uh, didn't need to just because I was not looking at what I was doing. The issue I kept running into is there is a, a collar down in here. There's a step that I thought the Z-Rod was supposed to sit on and it will like so. So you can see it's bottoming out. When you slip it onto the stepper motor, suddenly it's not bottomed out anymore. I'm like, what in the world is going on? That's because the Z-Rod and the stepper motor are actually face-to-face -face right there. They're touching off. And there's that much slack in the step of the bottom of the collar. Uh, that drove me nuts for like two or three hours. So this is fine. That's what we want. My alignment is actually very, very good. This all moves nicely. I'm going to use a wrench to just space it a little bit, just to keep things a little more even. And I'll do this both sides. And I'm going to tighten this collar up and move on with my life. And I don't know if the space at the bottom that I gave it is mandatory. I mean, clearly it's not. They didn't ship it that way, but again, this thing doesn't print right. But I just did that to try and give equal engagement to each of these on this coupler, just for, you know, equal clamping more or less. And with just one Z-Rod in it, the thing is moving like butter now. That's just me turning it by hand, and there's no binding or anything like that. The Z-Rods themselves still have plenty of like free play. They don't feel weird. When I say they, I mean the one I put in. So on the way up feels really good. On the way down, obviously I'm not fighting the weight, so it feels even better. That all feels really nice. So I'm gonna repeat this same process on the other side and hopefully be done with this and try and print something and see if we made any change at all. It turns out on this side, I actually do need these washers to get the Z-Rod to line up nicely with the stepper. I've pulled them out of there and with them out of there, it's just really far off. That could be due to just variations on how this framework is actually assembled from side to side, like if it's twisted a little bit when they screwed it together or whatever. I'm not going to get that deeply into it if I don't have to. In the long run, if this ends up causing me a problem, I'll probably order some shim stock here and make my own spacers to get these just perfect. Or frankly, just print some if it's printing well enough to even go. But that is about as good as I can get it. And my X play here is just about perfect. I can actually move the stepper around a little if I want, and I'll probably dink with that as I put it back together, but it's looking pretty good. And actually, you can see even with the washers in there, this alignment is still pretty poor. It wants to bind when I try and put the coupler together. 
So I'm actually going to put the other two washers from the other side in here too, just to shim that out some more. I'm sure that the Z framework is not actually put together square or whatever. I don't really think it's going to matter. I just don't want this stuff to be in a bind. And with both washers in there, it is legitimately perfect. So I've just got the coupler sat on the stepper. I'm just going to let go of this rod. Go straight home. Completely perfect. Yeah, I may need to adjust this frame at some point, but for now, we're going to try that. Very nearly forgot I need to check my height on both sides to make sure that when I adjusted these nuts I didn't put the gantry at a weird angle. Got my metric ruler, JDM even, so it's the real deal. Straight out of Japan, don't ask, it's a long story. And I'm just going to eyeball it, because that is about as good as I'm going to do anyway. And my eyeball says that is like 108 millimeters from the top of the stepper to the bottom of this bracket. Maybe 109, something like that. We'll get the other side adjusted so it's about the same, and we're going to try and print, I think. It turns out that's easier said than done because of all this stuff in our way. I'm going to take this wrench that the printer came with, which is two millimeters thick. I'm just going to throw it on top of the stepper, put my ruler out here, and eyeball it. And you'll have to take my word for it. But when I do that, it's saying this side is about two millimeters low. So what I'm actually going to do to change that, because I don't have enough travel in this nut to actually raise it two millimeters so i'm going to drop the other side two millimeters i'm just going to balance this until i get it pretty close so this thing is doing an excellent job of illustrating to you guys what a huge idiot i am the only way to influence this gantry left to right is down here at the couplers you can push this up and down to influence the gantry and that's it spending half my life screwing around with these bushings and everything and they don't do anything uh, in that regard it's all fed by gravity just for whatever reason couldn't wrap my mind around it. I was also doing the wrong thing by trying to measure the distance from the stepper to this bracket because I don't really think it matters and they may not be bolted on the same place on the bed on both sides and that shouldn't matter. What does actually matter is the distance between the gantry and the actual frame and again illustrating this thing showing me to be the idiot that I am. I didn't put this association together until I went and looked at the write-up for adding a dual z-axis to an ender three where they actually tell you to print blocks to do this which is a great idea and i should have before i started but anyway as you can see we're at like 140 millimeters on this side as it is now come over to the other side and it's pretty dang near the same it's like 139 and there's only so much i'm going to be able to do i've had the printer on i've powered the gantry up and down and it's repeatable so if i tell it to move 40 i can actually measure a 40 millimeter movement on each side so i think that's all good uh, everything in the z-axis now moves nicely smoothly all that good stuff my i guess this would be y uh, still moves like garbage i'm guessing that i need to replace all the wheels on it as well but i don't know that for sure and that is for sure going to be a different video so i have no clue how long this video is going to be but it's going to be way too long but just so i don't cliffhang you guys i am going to try another one of my calibration blocks and we'll see if i made positive changes here i kind of doubt it i think i'm going to have to tear this bed apart too i'm also going to have to re-level the whole thing and i'm tempted to swap plates because I'm thinking that this gantry being out of shape is, may have been what was causing my issue with the plate. Although it was out of level in the middle, so I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to re-level it and we're going to print something. And here is what we just got off of it. And it's looking much, much better. So keep in mind that's supposed to be a 10 millimeter block. Bang! And measuring across the bottom of it, this was, this was the side that was toward the bed, which was what was giving me grief before. We're coming up real nice. That's basically, you know, 1% error. You know, I can tune that out in other ways. Um, that could even just be down to belt tension and stuff like that. Pretty dang close. Our thickness in, and it's coming up just a little too thick too, but again, that could be a lot of things. That could just be minor settings. Uh, that kind of thickness is probably the least I would take. That's probably, you know, well, it's like a 4% error, right? Yeah, about 3 so that's about a 3% error in Z height. And I think on as the parts get bigger, the error will actually go down. It's these small parts where were the, the tables moving. Those short movements are a lot of inertia for the thing to control with belt slip and everything else. So less of those should be better parts. So we'll find out. Very happy though. This is far and away the best looking part that's come off of it as far as dimensional accuracy. And that's good news because I actually have stuff this printer needs to do. So I'm super pumped to get this thing dialed in. This was probably a super meandering and blah, blah, blah video, and I apologize for that. You guys have probably seen 
you know, blinding white light through these windows about five times because this has gone on for days as I've gone through this thing and tried, you know, 10,000 things that didn't work and everything else and just trying to learn the printer and stuff like that. I'm clearly no expert. But with each investigation of stuff like this and upgrade and all that, get a little bit closer to that expert tier, which maybe someday we'll get there. Still pretty confident I'm going to tear the Y-axis. Yeah, the, the Y-axis off of it because it just feels chunky when I move it. I'm sure all the wheels on it are screwed too. Uh, I know that the bed leveling is, right now it's like dialed in perfect, but that's because it's got coins and stuff under it still, but it's like dead level. So I know that's something that we're going to revisit. I've actually got another Creality aluminum sheet for it that hasn't been bent by a hillbilly with a pile of change. So that'll be fun. But this is the dawn of a new day as far as capabilities for the shop and stuff we can do with the channel. We now have a functional 3D printer, which is awesome. So guys, I want to really thank you for stopping in for this video, and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.